the internal structure literally melted with intense thermonuclear reaction. So the voice of God is incredibly effective. Effective to a dimension, effective to a dimension that we cannot really calculate even with a large brain of man. But we see the effects of the melting of the earth and the expelling of the magmatic material inside. For instance, this is a photo that we took of Dr. Don Patton, geologist, standing beside a layer of limestone. That layer of limestone is called the Austin Chalk Cretaceous Layer. Now, at Glen Rose, Texas, we work in that particular layer. By Austin Chalk, there's no indication that it is chalky. It's called Austin Chalk simply because of the whiteness of this beautiful uh, Cretaceous layer. Certain dinosaur remains are found within that layer. Now, we have found ripples in that layer. I took that photograph. These are ripples among dinosaur tracks, meaning that as these dinosaur tracks were laid down in the mud, that mud had enough calcium carbonate and lithified or cured so rapidly that it even preserved the claw marks and even preserved the ripple marks nearby. That's how rapidly it was solidifying and 12 hours later, new material was expunged from the earth, not only at Glen Rose, but from Glen Rose, leading geologists have published in print that from Austin, running through Glen Rose, 1,600 miles, this layer meets the eastern seaboard of the United States, picks up again at the White Cliffs of Dover, runs throughout Europe, throughout Russia, throughout China, runs south throughout Africa, back to the United States. This layer runs north throughout the continental United States and throughout Canada. South, it runs throughout Central and South America. West, it goes all the way to the coast, the Pacific coast, disrupted temporarily by the Rocky Mountains, picks up again in Australia. It is a global sedimentary layer, only a global flood, expunging magmatic material that would heat rapidly to the point of consolidation and then be cooled by the waters. Only the description of the biblical context can be matched by this. That brings us to additional evidence. Here we have trails on this layer, trails on the layer above. Then, as we visit an area in West Texas, we find rocks that are intermingled and they are termed Permian, Ordovician, Cambrian, Cretaceous. These are geologic terms not because the rocks are different, but because they hold fossils within them that are assigned different evolutionary ages. Now, I want this audience to know those ages are simply assigned. Actually, this is one major global event that took approximately one year in transpiration. This event we call the global flood or the Noahic Flood, the biblical worldwide flood. And the evidence of a global sedimentary deposit in the Austin Chalk, that evidence and attendant evidence where polystrate fossils run from that layer through other layers, through other layers, all lacing them together, this is one global event. Now, near the little town of Stanett, north of Borger, north of Amarillo, in the panhandle of West Texas, Mr. A.M. Coffey, in the 1950s, mid-1950s, a pumper for the Gulf Oil Company, was checking the area and he found nine human footprints in a trail in Permian Rock. Permian Rock is assigned by evolutionary assignment of dating 225 to 256 million years in age. Let me get that again. 
225 to 256 million years in age is the assignment of Permian rock. According to evolutionary theory, man, even in primitive form, didn't arrive until two and a half million years ago. Yet, here we have in that rock nine human footprints with a great toe, the second, third, fourth, little toe, the ball, medial section of the longitudinal arch, lateral section of the longitudinal arch, the metatarsal arch. We did a spiral CAT scan, 800 x-rays, and found the compression and weight distribution under and to the side of this track, meaning that this is genuine. There's no way it could have been carved. God uttered his voice, and there was disruption of global proportions. But once again, the Bible states that God in human form appeared in human history in the person of Jesus Christ. He spoke to the sea, and the wind abated. The sea was calm. But now he's speaking again, and he knows effective speech. Every person worldwide who reaches a phase of accountability hears the gentle voice, not an audible voice, the gentle voice of Jesus saying, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. You're hearing that voice right now. Would you respond to it? Would you pray with me this simple prayer? Just pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for creating me. Thank you for dying for me and shedding your blood. Thank you for knocking at my heart's door. I'm going to let you in right now. Lord Jesus, I open my heart's door to you right now. Come in. Cover my sins with your blood. Save me. I am your child. If you prayed that simple prayer, the same voice of God that created the universe now spoke to you, and you responded to that voice, and one day you'll hear him say, Come up. Hither. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.